as I mentioned up at the top, it seems convergence means something different for each operator. I think, Chris, let's kick off with you. We know that convergence ultimately means multiple communications services into one single network. Is that correct? That's correct, Eleni. So convergence to us is a combination of mobile and fixed coming together into a single device. It can encompass voice, data, content, video, and a range of different services. Ultimately, it's bringing these things together in one place so that the customer has ultimate convenience. Yes, ultimate convenience, that is the, the big point, right? Okay, so Angus, your view on, on yeah. what convergence, what does it mean to Neotel? We certainly see multiple dimensions. Certainly fixed and mobile convergence is part of it. Um, certainly the, the convergence between IT and telecoms and, and the, um, the, in the consumer uh, sector, that's the convergence of so much of, of the content that we see into the digital domain mm. that is telecoms. But for us, the, the key convergence that we see in the, in the voice, data, and internet space is really the ability to deliver multiple services. And uh, we believe in that space that the real game changer is fiber. Optical fiber is the... Is the That's true convergence for you then? Uh, optical fiber for us is the, is, is the way in which true convergence gets delivered in the fixed line space. Um, and um, I think certainly it's, it's a game changer in terms of the capacities, the bandwidths, and the capability of carrying those multiple services. Okay, well, let's ask uh, an analyst, an ICT analyst to be exact. Uh, Vitalis, what is your view? I mean, at the end of the day, we're looking at a growing market here in the country. Perhaps we've fallen behind when it comes to convergence in South Africa. But when you look at it as a whole with regards to the big players in the country, do you think that we are on the right path? Uh, well, I would say currently things are um, a, a bit slow than uh, when we look at markets uh, outside um, South Africa, especially markets in Europe. Because uh, essentially, first of all, just to give um, a view of convergence from Frost and Sullivan, we abstract con convergence at uh, three different levels. The first level being convergence of networks, um, as Chris said, convergence of uh, fixed and mobile networks. And then the second level, we look at um, convergence of services where you have different services, uh, the traditional voice, uh, data, and uh, video uh, being converged together. And finally, we look at convergence um, at the device level, where you have um, like one device being able to offer you the different services across different networks. Now, when um, we look at that and in the context of South Africa, we see that uh, very little has, has been happening to, to that extent. So far, we've seen a convergence of uh, services uh, to um, particular networks to some level, where we see uh, both uh, voice and data being delivered um, over the same network. But currently, um, what we would say that um, we're still a long way to go to really achieve a convergence as it's defined uh, internationally. Mm. Interesting to note that uh, tree convergence in the South, South Africa hasn't happened as yet, but that's because perhaps we have been very behind with technological advances. Is that the right way to look at it? And I know, Angus, I mean, yeah. you, you're converging fixed line mobile in a sense, uh, and of yeah. course the data services as yeah. well. No, I think, I'd, you know, I think the, the Frost and Sullivan de definition is, uh, is, is, is a good academic definition of, of, of what actually happens. Um, in many markets. I think we have challenges in the South African market and, and, and one of the fundamental challenges we've had in the South African market is the, the access network. So the, we've seen a massive growth of mobile, we've seen massive growth of 3G networks that are delivering um, data and voice services on a mobile platform and we're looking 60-70% of the, yeah. uh, the uh, broadband market in South Africa is really made up of mobile services. And I, and I would include in that the kind of service we deliver on um, some of our um, wireless platforms. But certainly on the, on, the, on the traditional fixed line side, we, we haven't seen the levels of convergence, uh, largely because we haven't had local loop unbundling, we haven't had really competitive local access. Uh, the way we're doing it as Neotel, obviously, is, is rolling out fiber and getting that fiber out to customers. Um, but certainly I think that's where, the, where, where we are now. The, a lot of the backbone has been done, uh, but at the access end, that's where, we're uh, where we need to see some radical changes. Average revenue per user we know is coming under pressure, termination uh, rates are changing the platform quite extensively, and this is what perhaps has forced the big players such as Vodacom, such as MTN, uh, to really uh, look forward and, and be quite... Uh, bring strategies to the fore that is going to change the playing field. How have you adopted the negatives into a positive manner and, and brought this into the convergence space? Okay, so I think convergence is a journey and not a destination. And, and I guess this started some 17 years ago when we brought out mobile phones and we then moved into an area where we were able to provide data to people on the move. That data has subsequently moved into nomadic and even stationary, rep replacing to some degree some of the fixed line, uh, where fixed line wasn't available. 
and so we moved into a converged space. And I, I think it's probably not correct to say that convergence hasn't happened. It has happened. But it has happened at a, at a fixed and mobile space and not necessarily all the way through all the services. When you build a network, you build it initially with voice in mind, and then you soon see that data is where the excitement is happening. And what we're trying to do as a Vodacom and as a, as a mobile network is to bring data to the masses in the same way that we brought voice to the masses. Y who would have thought just a few years ago that 26 million people would be able to make a phone call on the Vodacom network? Um, and, and we believe that data will do the same is thing. Is it the sign the of the space. times that we're seeing just more increased demand from a data perspective, or is it just about big corporates also following profits in a sense? Well, I think it's a need for data. Social networking is data. Mm. If you want to be in and be part of the crowd today, you need data. Uh, going down to very simple systems um, that, have, that people have found cheaper and more effective ways of communicating. In fact, I think communication has changed. Uh, I know when SMS became so prevalent, it was about being able to send a message and not have a conversation. And if you're seeing the, the proliferation now of mobile networks, perhaps we communicate differently today and data is the means to do that. Vitalis, I mean, you mentioned your third point was quite interesting. One device uh, for a range of things, of so a voice for data and for everything else that uh, we require on a day-to-day -day basis. Is that where we're headed in South Africa? Do you think that our networks, that our infrastructure can handle this kind of uh, leapfrog to the future, something that we have been seeing in markets in the developed world in particular? Uh, well, it, looking at the way the trends are progressing, um, we're slowly heading there. Of course, uh, there's, there's a lot that comes into play. Um, what the equipment vendors are looking at, what um, the market forces um, are, at, uh, like in, in different countries. For example, like here in South Africa, we need to look at what uh, the operators are looking at as the current um, main uh, like spinner of revenue. And that really uh, defines which uh, devices will come into the market and which services are going to be supported on those devices. For example, if you, lo uh, you look at, um, say, a mobile phone, being able to support um, traditional voice, being able to support data, and being able to support video, uh, su de such devices have started coming into the market. But then uh, looking at uh, whether networks are currently able to support that to, to some level, yes, that's already happening. But of course, on the mass scale, uh, there's still some way to go. And it all depends on what um, service delivery platforms um, are there on the net network provider side. Definitely, we, like, um, in terms of research and development, uh, quite a lot, lot of advancements have been made in terms of um, what networks can uh, support, what services they can control. So in terms of devices coming to consume what uh, those networks can control, uh, the market's actually uh, there to an extent. And of course, uh, we're going to see more interesting things coming as uh, we head into the future. Just a, just yeah. a comment on that, because I, I, I think we, the, the one point that uh, you'd made uh, um, on, on whether this is a, a strategy from the telcos themselves, mm. and I think one does need to look at the supply side as well, because the reality is that we've seen a very substantial shift in what voice is. Uh, you know, voice is essentially an application. It's, it's another data application. And so the, the traditional model where voice is charged um, at, a, at, a, at a very substantial price per second or per minute. Uh, that is shifting globally. So globally we've seen a very, very dramatic shift in the, in the per unit, per minute, per second pricing model for fixed line voice. We're starting to see that happening here. It's controlled entirely by the whole interconnect rate thing. So in, in our case, uh, we have over a period of two years, but with the two drops that we've seen in interconnect rates, we have dropped our um, call prices um, for calls, say, from a fixed line to, say, a Vodacom fund. We have dropped uh, the, the, those prices by nearly 50% in two years, t following that price decline down. That big dramatic shift is going to come in mobile as well. We are going to see a plunging of mobile prices for voice over time. And at the end of the day, Angus, data has got to make up the difference. Data has got to make up the difference, yeah. but at some point as well, I mean, when you see what um, people in Europe are paying for data, I mean, you really can't compare yeah. it to the South African yeah. markets. Where is growth really going to come from? Because eventually, we're going to catch up to the developed yeah. market as well. I, I guess for is it volumes? This, is, this is never easy for operators. Um, it's, it's always a challenge because in a competitive market, uh, you, you have to sell at competitive prices. And, and, and certainly I think we've had quite competitive markets in both voice and data in South Africa in the last couple of years. Mm. Uh, and that has been good for consumers, but it has put pressure on the networks. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the, uh, that's what competition is, and that's, that's uh, why we compete, is to, is, is to deliver good services. Uh, I don't think there's a, a silver bullet. I don't think there's some 
uh, specific service that's going to suddenly replace, say, all the old voice revenues with, with some special revenues. It's a question of getting the balance right mm -hmm. and uh, keeping the costs low on the networks and while maintaining the, the level of services. What about disruptive uh, technology? Because essentially that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at disruptive products coming to the market to try and lure in the new customer and also to try and keep market share. I mean, we've got over 100% penetration rates here in South Africa mm -hmm. when it comes to voice. So is it about also being innovative within that space and coming up with new and exciting things. So it comes back to the competition. There's this whole drive to try and catch the eyes of the consumer. Let's think of, of the world where we used to have a desktop, a laptop and a cell phone. And now today an iPad or a Blackberry Playbook wants to come out and take that ownership, own that, those eyeballs of the customer. So we have the manufacturers fighting for the space, we have the operators fighting for the space, mobile and fixed, and ultimately at the end of the day the customer is going to be the winner because they're going to be, have a, a range of choice. You know, today you can get a smartphone which can do what a computer did five years ago for less than a thousand rand. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get to that level, all of a sudden you have people in a country like South Africa, a third world economy, who can now participate in the digital divide. And they can really move into a space just with a device in their pocket that they can now uh, be online, get emails, send CVs, communicate in a very different way. So mm -hmm. it, it's come a long way, but it's an ecosystem that, that feeds off itself. Absolutely. And Vitalis, when it comes to the consumer's needs, uh, if you had to look at the, the various telecommunications bills uh, that you get on a monthly basis from all the operators, if you had to put that all together, a monthly bills for consumers could come up to 2,000 Rand, even 3,000 Rand. Well, perhaps I'm alluding to what I get on a monthly basis. Uh, and perhaps one gig is just not enough uh, for people out there wanting to be on the internet all the time but how does then the operator come up with a solution with uh, you know a number where they say you'll get uh, a mobile service you'll get internet service you'll get data isn't it really a tough scenario that is playing out right now because it is about keeping costs down but it is also about making a profit oh uh, well um essentially what what happens in that case is that um the providers will look at um like the the annual capex the op operating expenditure and then they'll also look at um, the potential of that particular service um, to, to the network. For to some extent, some services will be int introduced just to make sure that they uh, prevent uh, like or minimize churn so that they can uh, maintain customer loyalty. And for that extent, uh, such services will be highly subsidized. But in terms of services that actually bring revenue to, to the operators, uh, what operators generally tend to do is to I mean, to maximize on how much they can get uh, from, uh, from the consumers. Of course, without, uh, I mean, exploiting the consumer um, to high end. So at the end of the day, you'll actually get, like when services are bundled together, there's a particular key service that's actually uh, driving the revenue and other services are riding on top of that revenue. But in terms of the exact amount uh, that operators decide to charge, uh, say, if you have like, um, say, a da data contract, in terms of the exact amount they decide to charge you per month, that varies from operator to operator. But uh, one key factor that cannot be uh, ignored is like uh, market forces. Operators always tend to compare prices with each other. So in cases where like uh, one operator decides to drive down prices by um, say dumping uh, products on the market, some, uh, it forces many operators to follow suit, especially if such an operator has a big force on the market. But all these operators will always compare uh, prices with each other. Uh, and the, at the end of the day, what really determines those prices is what they put into providing the service and the amount of revenue they're targeting to get out of that service at the end of the year.